Hi, my name is Sally Wood for Be Inspired. Today I'm going to be showing you how to shorten a tulle skirt. It's an easy quick fix, but some people get a little bit uh, confused on how to do it. And my friend is going to be the mother of the bride, and I know it's an unusual colour, but she's going to be fantastic in it. Now I went round and helped her decide how long she wanted the skirt to be. And uh, we just folded up a straight line, or as straight as we could make it at the front of her and just put pins in. From the original hem, which is here, to the new hem, or possible new hem, is eight and a half inches on that side. And if I straighten it out on this side, we'll have a look and see what it is on this side. And it's eight inches. So I am going to divide it. Actually, she wanted it shorter, so I'm gonna just make sure that I fold up to eight and a half inches all the way around on the underskirt and this takes a little a little while because you don't want to to rush this i'm going to measure it down and as you go around the curvature of the skirt everything kind of alters so you want to be doing um a little bit wider lengths so here's my first one here which might change and what i'm all i'm going to do is put a little bit of a press mark there and then measure my next length and a half here put my press mark in kind of wriggle it a little bit now the reason why I press it up first so that it uh, is nice and even I'm not going to cut anything until I'm all the way around just remember this this is wider than all of this so it, you just need it to go in as straight as you can. Something to always remember when you're doing this is make sure that the seam here lines up with the seam here. And uh, you'll find that hopefully everything else will go in properly. So here we are, it's a side seam. So we'll just put that in. That's always a good good way to make sure your or the skirt hem isn't moving too far out of line yeah eventually you come to your beginning where you started and just roll roll it out slightly if you need to pucker it that's fine too and then just join your skirt here the next part is up to you whether you do it or not Personally, I like to cut down to about an inch and put a half inch hem on it. If you don't want to do that, I would advise you just to do a zigzag along the bottom and then cut this back to the zigzag. You'll find that it's easier, it shouldn't roll the fabric. So here goes. I'm literally just cutting the top. And then and all I do is I run this and along the fold, new fold for the hem just cut cut up to it all the way around make sure you've got sharp scissors I had to borrow these from a friend when you come to the um, seam just be a little bit careful because I I don't like to cut through everything so I lift it so I'm literally just going through that part of the seam and not cutting into the seam underneath and then just cut through cut on round then you don't have any nasty surprises later there we go nearly at the end and you see that I'm rippling it as I go pat it into place if necessary and all all I need to do now is from here to where I started in a straight line I'm going to cut the tulle. This is the part I really don't like doing. The easiest way to do this, so you cut evenly, is one width at a time. Okay, just remember that you've already put the hem at eight and a half. So you actually want to make the tulle netting eight inches off, which gives you a little bit of an overlap. And basically you do the same on each layer. So this is the time consuming part. Just gonna cut up 
to the eight mark like that and then I'm going to put this on the bottom and I'm going to cut from here to eight inches like that and I'm going to move it around and I'm going to cut it to eight inches and I'm going to do this on all four layers of tulle separately the trick to cutting the tulle is always make sure that this end is at right angles to the original skirt. Flatten it out as well as you can and then cut. And this should overlap the, the new hem by half an inch, which is, is a decent amount. And if it looks like it's not in line, make sure that you turn it so it is otherwise if it twists then you're going to have a wonky head now this particular tulle skirt they've got all layers sewn together on the side seams which is a little bit irritating so all i'm going to do is i'm going to carry on cutting like i have been now this is where it gets a little bit wary I'm going to put that on the side seam and I'm going to just pick up the top layer like this and cut into my eight like this. All the others are intact and then I'm going to cut up the side and get rid of that piece. Not too close, just enough to not have to worry about it. So that one's gone and on the other side of this I'm going to just cut the top piece that I'm, that I'm doing now up to my 8 which is here. In fact I'm going to cut it a little bit shy but not by very much. And again, oops, it's quite, quite uh, awkward. Put my ruler down. This is the one I'm cutting and uh, peel that bit back and again I'm just going to cut to my 8 mark. Now you can see that there's actually another piece of tulle underneath and as I get there it should be able to be moved out of the way as I carry on going round. I'm going to do this on all layers and only on the last layer will I take it all the way across that seam. On this side of the skirt it's only the two layers that are joined together so it just be aware of the fact your skirts will vary as you're going around and as I say I'm just doing the top layer at the moment and I'm taking my time so I don't cut into anything that I don't want to be cutting into. See the layer underneath is still intact. And I'm just going to do like I did on the other side, which is to cut up either side of that seam once I've got my piece of eight. There we go. There's that piece. Make sure you separate them. These are, <laughs> they're not hard to do because there's really no hemming on the uh, tulle side. They're just time consuming, separating and cutting. And as I say, you could, you could just cut all the way across, but in my experience, I've never had a really good finish with it. So that's why I do it separately. And carry on going. Now I'm just doing the second layer on this skirt, so I'm just going to come up here to my 8 mark. And the top piece of tulle I've already cut, so I'm going to cut the next layer. I'm holding that one back like this. And again, the bottom goes at right angles to the original skirt. And I'm just going to cut up to my 8 mark all the way around again. 
just coming up to the last part of the top skirt and it's a finer tulle and it might be wider than the original so but the main reason for doing it separately is this if you make one mistake on one length that's okay if you make one mistake on all four five six lengths then uh, that's more noticeable Let's shake that out And you'll see that there's the bottom of the skirt of the tulle and there's the bottom of the underskirt. So it just hangs down about half an inch to an inch. You don't want to be doing it the other way. The other way would be that way with the, the underskirt showing. So always make sure that the top skirt is half an inch longer than the bottom. So. Starting on the side seam, let's say it's not very easy to see, black is one of those horrible colours. I'm just going to fold the, seat, the raw edge into the pressed new hem and fold it over and then pop that underneath the foot. So make sure it's all under there. I can't even see my glass, I see today very well. So that's that under there like that. And then on about number three, stitch length, pull all that fabric over there. I'm going to just fold the next length in, in between the two, the pin and the original pin. And I'm just gonna sew the hem up like that. Where the next pin is, remove it, fold the raw edge into the hem like that. You don't have to tug very much because it's going to, you, you're just trying to find, follow the curvature of the original skirt. If you pull it too much, it's going to wrinkle and allow it to follow through. Repeat this all the way along this bottom of this skirt to the end. And then you've got a nice even half inch hem. What you could do if you wanted is to leave that open and zigzag and then just cut this part of the hem back to the zigzag but I, I prefer not to, I prefer to put a bit of weight in, in a hem. When you get to the seam make sure that when you fold everything over that the seams, the seams match up and that might mean that uh, this is walked a little bit so if you need to put pleats in just to go around the corner that's fine too but it should even out as you get as you get there so my seams line up i'm just going to pop over the, so the stitch line and carry on going round now my friend who had the black skirt that i altered that she wants to have a sash made and she'd already purchased one sash so she purchased another and what I'm going to do is I'm going to join them. I'm just going to trim back along this seam here like this and the same on the other side because I'm going to join them on the bias. Then it's going to be easier to unstitch along the base here. Let's see how they've uh, sewn it first, which is actually a straight stitch. Sometimes they use a loop stitch, which is a bit annoying. So all I'm going to do is just unpick a few stitches. And when I say a few stitches, I actually mean quite a few. So I'm just going to un undo these a fair way down. Now, I've uh, unstitched quite a ways. I'm going to be putting the front side of one this side. And then, with right sides together, I'm going to pop that across here. Now, I need to go diagonally across, so we're going to be use, losing quite a bit of area. And I still have... I'm just checking to see how much how much more I need to unpick. So there's a little bit more on this one so it goes in flat and a little bit more on the other. Now the reason why I 
unstitch like this is I don't like cutting and then having to go back and pick all my threads out. I also, as long as you keep the threads quite short, you, you can control it quite easily as you take them out and just trim them back. My mother showed me this years ago. Now sometimes I will use an unpicker, sometimes I'll use my scissors. But it really depends what I'm working on. And something fine like this, I tend to use my pin. So I can't stand having to go back and take out those horrible little threads. Either way is time consuming. It doesn't matter which way you choose. So let's have a look, see if that's wide enough. It should be almost there. Now that goes there. That goes there. Just a wee tad more on here. And I'll be done. Now that that's open like that, I've got a nice square flat area there. And now I have the nice square flat area here. And I'm just going to go across like this. And I will be marking. I'm actually going to fold that over and iron it. Because it's such a wide piece of fabric, it needs to have a sew line. I'm just going to press this out just a little bit, like this. I'm not going to press it for too much because it, it really doesn't matter. And then I'm going to put that at a 45 degree angle. That needs to go across at right angles there. right up to that corner. As I say, it's a long sew line and that's the only reason I am doing it this way. And pick the fabric up if you're not quite, if you don't think you've got enough movement. There we go. Now the other thing I'm going to do is lay this one out flat. I'm actually going to press this one too, just a little bit. Now I don't have it on a very hot Temperature, it's only on number two. No water. Oops, a daisy, what happened there? Be really careful. I think this has fallen over. I always buy an iron with a clear base like that so that uh, the Teflon doesn't, doesn't uh, rip up the fabrics when I'm ironing them. But that's my own personal like. And it looks like I've got to buy a new iron which is a bit irritating. Not that they're very expensive, but I can't have an iron ripping up fabric. And I say, so I think the cats might have knocked this one over. I've had it a number of years, so there's something across the front here that's not quite right. Anyway, enough of my problems. And on to this. Seeing as we had a little bit of trouble, I've just cut two triangles out and I'm going to press those into place on here. And the reason I've done triangles is because I don't really need the whole bit. So this is fusible. Make sure the fusible side is down and make sure it's on the wrong side of what you're sewing onto. Makes a horrible mess otherwise. So spread that over in the right place. As I say, you only need it from the from where you're going to be stitching across. And I don't do enough dressmaking like I used to, to to remember everything. But anyway, I'd much rather show that you that I do make mistakes occasionally. But that will stabilise that sew line. There we are. That's fine. Oops, a daisy. I'll get that off later. So that's on there. And then on this side, there's my sew line. Again, make sure that's that's quite even. Fold it over slightly from where you were sewing. And again, iron that into place. Make sure you've got plenty of uh, water going through because it sticks on better. Um, what I'm now going to do is like I did before I'm just going to fold it over but seeing as I've already got the mark 
here. I'm just going to use it again. There we go. Fold it along there. It's a little bit firmer than it was, but it's it'll be fine. And I'm only going to press, literally press. And that will give me 45 degrees across that I need. And I did get a little bit on there, so I'm going to clean that off before I start ironing again. Otherwise, I'm going to end up putting it all on here. So there's my press line there. It's a bit wonky, but it'll, it'll straighten out. Okay, so I've trimmed back. I've repressed my diagonal line. And now I'm going to just pop that back on top of the, uh, the other half of the sash. And you can see they both correspond. And I'm going to repin it. In the first time I've made them that uh, this has happened, but hopefully I'll get the rest of this done quite quickly. Put four pins in just to hold it. To there, and then in, again in the middles. I don't do dressmaking anywhere near as much as I used to. I used, this is how I first earned my living when I was younger. Start again. So I'm going to line up my sew line with the little arrow on here. Do it on the number four. And let's go ahead. And that is working a lot better. Still not 100% but way better than it was. I'm going to actually give a little bit of a... Make it a little bit taut but not, not too much. I'm not pulling... just giving a little bit of and you know what the top one might just be a little bit wider than the, the smaller one mm, something's not going quite right there we'll, we'll work it out as long as it looks more or less flat across the back that's all I'm worried about I might actually come from it from the other angle and there we are we've got a straightish line now, I, I forgot to show you, but I actually um, trimmed back to within quarter of an inch. And the other thing I did was I started at this end to the middle and then flipped it over and went in. Only because the, the fabrics were walking against each other. And I lost that footage, so I'm really sorry. But anyway, I am just going to press that flat like this very carefully and you'll see that the join has been spread all the way across the back of the sash which is what we want and then it doesn't bulk any in any particular place it's even right, I'm going to I don't want to pull too much through so I'm just going to pull like that much on each side and I'm going to sew up to where I initially join, join it on both sides like this. So I might have to sew that shut in a minute. So all I'm doing is evening out the seam that I unpicked earlier, like that. And I'm just pinning it on the seam side, not, not the other side. And I'm just going to roll that up and put a pin on the other half, on the new half, like that. Having done that, I'm going to flip it over, push some of this through, like I did on the other side, and do exactly the same. And actually, I've got my pins facing the wrong way because I'm going to sew from here to the center on both sides. It's better to pin it into place first. So if I, if I hold it that way around, I'll get it the, get the pins on the right side. So there we go. That's that one. Make sure your your sash is inside. Here's the join. So I'll just pop that on there like that, so it's nice and even. 
saves turning everything in, inside out. And then I'll just put a little bit more on, not, for, not very much more. Uh, because what I'll do is I'll pull it all the, all the way through and then I'll top stitch. And that's perfectly okay, it'll be right at the back of the sash so nobody will see. And I get it as close as I can to, the, to either side, so I might only have maybe an inch to an inch and a half to top stitch. And I'll show you, show you that in a minute. So that's that part ready to go. Now the second part are some loops. Now I know that was the diagonal, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that down so it makes a triangle. And then I know where the warp and weft threads go, which are either along, along here or that way. I'm going to cut that on both sides. That piece I can get rid of. The same here, this is the diagonal. Fold that down, which will give me the base of the warp or the weft threads. And cut that too. I'm also then going to fold that along here, because that's my diagonal, and I want this straight. So here we go. And I'll do the same on here. And the reason is she wants belt loops to hold the base of the, the sash in place. And then I can turn it round and do the same again, just fold that in. Because as I say, this is my diagonal. I can see where I sewed it. With a bit of luck, that should give me enough length, or enough length to make some loops. Get rid of that, and the same here. Nice and easy. Now, excuse my stomach, but I'm going to measure my belt loop. My belt loop is two and a half inches. So I've got plenty of length or width. Now, I want one at the centre back, two either side, so I kind of need five. And I would make them about an inch long, an inch wide, sorry. So I'm going to just cut these into one inch strips. Like I've shown you before on my upholstery projects, just be careful you not to cut through your tape though. Just carry on cutting. Okay, so I'm going to fold them into in half. Okay, I'm just going to start on the sash part first. And I'm going to slip the pre-sewn side under. I usually go back further than about an inch so that I can actually stitch on top of the original stitches and that will hold it all in place. I'm going to pop that down there and I'm going to sew along the original sew line and I think I think I'll be okay on a size 4 so here we go remove the pins as you get there only so you can wriggle the fabric into line and because you're going with the warp or the weft thread, you can, which are the stronger threads, you can pull it to give a bit of tension and it'll go in straight. And if we, if I did my job right, here we go. Here's the join here. I'm going to get there. I'm going to actually double stitch over it. Not this time around. I'm just going to carry on sewing for a little bit longer take that one out make sure everything's tucked in come forward a little bit further maybe another inch to two inches four centimeters reverse stitch only so that you're secure on that side 
Now kind of leave it popped in like that and start again on the other side in exactly the same way. Well, I've given it a good two inches there I think. Make sure the top and the bottom are in line. Carry on going. The end of the second side reverse like you did on the first. Here comes the magic. You just pull gently on one side of the sash comes out. Pull gently on the other side. Oops, like that. And there's the second side. And it doesn't look very neat at the moment, but we're going to pull this in. Um, I didn't do such a good job on matching it, but that means there's a wrong side and a right side, and all I'm going to do is top stitch that into place. I will confess, I've just opened the seam up almost to where the, um, the join is on both sides, only because there's so much fabric to be taken in and I'm not happy with that. So all I'm going to do is pull the top, keep the, keep the bulky or the loose bottom underneath so the dog feet will pull it through, push all your threads inside. Start just on the other side of the seam where it is joins and so forward. Oops, Daisy. Now it might not want to go straight at first. As I say, then fold, fold the fabric over. Make sure the two joins are equal. So kind of level like that as you sew. And just keep it taut on the top. The dog feet with a bit of luck will do everything. And the dog feet are the ones that kind of munch everything through. So here, here goes. If there's a little pleat it won't matter. It will be right where the other join is. Keep the top really tight. And this sometimes happens, as I say, this is a, this is two separate uh, pieces of fabric and one might have been slightly wider than the other. You know, a quarter of an inch will make a huge difference. So I say, tuck that right underneath and you can see it might pleat just there at the end. But maybe not too bad. And it's just gone over where the join is. Right down a little way and then we're done. Just trim back. You don't have to overstitch on this. And there's a little bit of crinkling. But if she has that on the underside and it's all bunched up like that, nobody's going to notice. So I think she'll be pleased with that. And so you can't make silk purse out of sow's ear. Now, these are my hoops, or will be. I've folded and ironed where the centre is. And all I'm going to do is fold one side into there, and the other side, they're going to be quite thin, but I don't want them too thick. Let's see if this works. If not, I'll have to think, of it, think through this again. Put it through a, a little ways. Meant to be delicate. I mean, it's a it's a pretty skirt. So put a couple of stitches in. If it doesn't pull, just move it along. It'll pull eventually. Oh, maybe it won't. Might not have enough on there. This is not the best way to do it. Once you've got a thread, just pull it from behind to the end. Then you fold the next one up, just like the first, and prior to getting to the end of the first tab, oopsie daisy, fold the second one up, like that and pop it so it's end to end or just a little bit separate okay lift it up pop it 
down and put a couple of stitches in and then just fold carry on folding you could make these a little bit wider I just didn't want them to be too wide now pulling the original tab just carry on pulling, and it will pull the second one through and you just carry on until you've got all five tabs done uh, here's the skirt back again I'm going to find the center back now the center back is here and I can't put one of these ties straight over the center back because it's uh, not a good position trim up the threads on that and I'm just going to put it on one side of there so it's just going to be slightly off and I am going to just tag that on and I'm going to make sure it's hmm this is going to be a bit weird because she needs some quite long I'm going to think about this one I think because she needs at least two and a half inches which takes it into the skirt which I'm not happy about well, I could do it I could do it down there okay so where's my where's this now some of these things I have to think about as I go along I'm going to fold it and recut that rethink that I'm going to be cutting it to three and a quarter inches and if I fold that down half an inch it will definitely be at the top like that sew that across the top and then I will fold that up the appropriate amount there and just tag it into the skirt so it's going to look like that and the reason why I did them so thin was so that they didn't show up too much I'm going to put one in the center back one just back from the side here and then I'll work out where the front is and measure it so it's even so like my jeans I've got one above each hip to the side and the back so this is going to take a little bit of thought a little bit of planning the center back is here so I'm going to offset it slightly put a mark there I'm going to measure across six inches to the side put a pin there and another six inches from there to the front I might adjust these in a minute so here we go there's the one that corresponds with that the one that corresponds with here now the reason why I might alter it is because I was thinking although it would be spread out of her putting a belt there so was all swapping everything over and it might be a bit tight so let me move this one back an inch and that an inch and that will give me that actually gives me seven inches that'll be that's fine and then I'll just move this one back half an inch and the same on the other side now those those are the marks where I'm going to put my tabs and my tabs and then I know that I'm starting off with basically the same length they might vary slightly but not but not by very much and cut them each separately because you sometimes find if you add if you put them side by side and then cut them that you inadvertently cut them shorter each time or longer each time probably longer each time so I'm just going to do that I've removed this part of the sewing machine so I can actually fit the skirt around it. I fold, folded over just about a quarter of an inch of the tab and I'm placing it on top of the first pin and removing the pin. And I'm just going to pop this underneath. Now I'm going to put the needle actually through the tab like that. The reason is I don't want the tab moving 
and uh, if I start across from the tab and go across then it might not pick it up so I'm popping the tab there I'm going to go forward maybe two or three stitches and I'm going to shorten the stitch to a three so I should get at least three stitches in there okay I'll put four in which should take it just outside the tab and then I'm going to reverse the same amount of stitches and one over so it actually goes either side of the tab by one stitch and then I'm going back forward and finish now it's not the best tab I've put in because the silk is a bit slippery but it should do the job remove the strings and then go straight down into the skirt so open the skirt up open all the ruffles up if you can and uh, what I'm going to do is measure down my two and a half inches. Oops, a daisy. My two and a half inches from the bottom of the stitch to where the new fold needs to be, which is here. And I'm, I'm sorry if this isn't very um, if this isn't very obvious to you. So that's what I'm going to try to talk all the way through it. So from the base of the my stitching to where I'm going to turn it is probably another quarter of an inch so I'm going to just fold it under like that take it down into the folds of the folds of the skirt in a straight line with the foot so I can get over the seam here and again pop my needle oops a daisy it should hold. Work out where the end of your fold is. Put the needle down through the tab, pulling the skirt away. So it's just a flat piece of skirt you're going to be sewing through. You don't want to be going through with the folds, otherwise it's not going to look right. And again, oh dear, I think that one moved. So all of this is really quite slippery and gauzy. But you need to go all the way through all of them. There's my four stitches. Four stitches that way. And then back forward. I'm going to lift this up. Carefully cut back. And I can't really see what I'm doing these days. So that should be long enough all the way through to the back of the skirt and here is my first loop this the it doesn't obstruct any ruffles the ruffles are straight we can take them out later as I say it slipped as it went in I'm not sure I don't think she's going to worry about that I'll see how all of them come out and if they all come out wonky and um, I'll just leave it if they don't then I'll go back and take that one out and then I go to the next one until I've got all five in. Again, fold it over a quarter of an inch, place it on top of the pin, remove the pin, slide everything under to about a quarter inch from the top. Pop the needle down through all of it so it doesn't slip and, and redo it. Three or four stitches forward and then back. Trim back all your loose ends. Do not cut the skirt. Oh, I've done that before. Years ago when I was a young girl starting out. And underneath, try to keep it all in a straight line. That's the hardest part is to do that. So you don't mess up the pleats, the uh, natural flow of the skirt. Edge down your half, two and a half inches, fold it. If it's slightly off, don't worry. You're bound to have uh, things that don't line up. Pull your skirt flat and keep this in a straight line from the, from the waistband down. 
I'm going to pop the needle all the way through everything. Mind your own fingers, for goodness sake, that does hurt. Needles all the way through. Hopefully this will go in better. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it did. No, maybe not. Lift it up if you need to. Just don't tear the skirt. Lift everything up and move it out. And I can see with this that the same thing happens. So it's just the way everything goes on here. Now the reason why you go all the way through all the layers is if you just go through the tulle it will tear it whereas the fabric underneath will hold it firm and again the fabric has twisted so it's just it's just going to have to be like that but these are firm they're not going to go anywhere they'll certainly do a night of dancing thank you for joining me today i hope you found this short video um, of use Remember, cut each layer is painstaking doing it separately, but it's worth it in the end. One mistake on all layers would look awful, whereas one mistake on one layer is a little bit more forgiving. Always make sure that the um, tulle length is half an inch longer than um, the underskirt that you cut. Don't do what I've done in the past, which was to cut this tulle an inch longer. It was actually an inch shorter by the time I'd finished. What a mess. Anyway, so take care. See you later. Ciao.